gang's all here. An all-new season of American Greed premieres January 19th on CNBC. Coming up on The Susie Orman Show. Your emergency fundamentals. How you can turn an eight-month emergency fund into 16 months. Also, my Halloween show guest Morgan returns to share what happened after she revealed the skeletons in her closet. Here I was, I was like having my finances hold me hostage. And now I talk about it and I'm amazed at what people tell me about their finances. And you ask me, can I afford it? I would like to buy a weekend car. Just to drive on the weekend? Are you kidding me? Hi, everybody. I'm Susie Orman, and you are watching The Susie Orman Show. Tonight, I am talking about emergency fundamentals. What do I mean by that? How many years now have I been saying to you that you need an eight-month emergency fund? And you say to me, what does that mean? Eight months of what? Eight months of my total monthly expenses, eight months of just my needs. What does eight months mean? First of all, it used to mean a few years ago, truthfully, that it was just for the necessities of life. You know, your mortgage, your rent, your phone, things that you have to to spend money on no matter what. Then I decided to change that. And it should be eight months of what you really spend per month. Now, why do I say that? Because when you lose your job, when something goes wrong, you don't change your behaviors. You don't cut back. You don't stop going out to eat. You don't stop going to the movies. You don't stop getting your hair cut. You don't stop living your life. You act as if everything is going to be okay sooner than later, so you spend what you were always spending. So now I want you to have eight months of expenses. That's number one, not just your needs, but the money that you spend on average per month. If you get yourself, however, in a situation where you do lose your job or something happens and you can't work anymore, you are not, and I underline, not, 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 not. You are not to continue to live your life as if you are going to get a job the next week, a month from now, or even three months from now. At that point in time, and listen to me closely, if you were to cut back and go to just your essentials, not your life expenses, but just your essentials, that eight-month emergency fund could turn in and last for you to what? 10, 12, 14, or even 16 months. You could actually double it. So if you save eight months of total expenses, you lose your job, and then you start living on just the minimum that you need, eight months can turn in to a whole lot more. And you still need a whole lot more because on average, it is taking people still to this day one to two years to get a new job. Do you hear me? So cut back if something happens to you. Save more than you think you need to. And if it does, you will be just fine. Let's go to Wisconsin, and we have Greg on the air. Hi, Susie. I'd like to thank you for inviting me on your show. We are such huge fans. Thank you. Who's we? My wife and my uh, two sons. We love that. All right, ask me your question, sweetheart. My question for you today is how and where should we invest in our emergency funds in today's turbulent markets? It seems to become increasingly difficult to find an investment that provides liquidity, safety, and a decent rate of return. Uh -huh. Here's the truth of the matter is, you are not going to find a decent rate of return anywhere for money that needs to be liquid, which means you can get at it at any time you want. It is just the fact of life. Until interest rates start to increase, they are simply low here. Now, with that said, I would rather see you have money that you can get at and not worry about the interest rate that you're getting than take a risk, invest that money for a higher amount of interest, and then you need it at a time when possibly that interest rate has decreased. Just leave it where it is. Glenn, you are on The Susie Orman Show. Hi, Susie. Hi, Glenn. Ask me your question. I am a 50-year-old uh, former executive who has run out of uh, unemployment benefits. I've been uh, 
out of work for over a year and a half and still looking. Yeah. I owe 30k on my home and have 48,000 in emergency fund. Um, no other retirement accounts. Uh, my question is, do I pay off the home at this time or do I hold on to what's left of my savings for emergencies? Yeah, let me ask you this question, Glenn. Why do you want to pay off your home in full? Uh, just a feel of security, knowing that I owe my home clear, clear and free. Right. And yeah. what would happen if you paid off the home, you have $18,000 now left to your name. That is it. You still have to feed yourself, pay for electricity, pay for everything. How long do you think, given that you have no money in retirement, now all you have left is $18,000, you're not going to get any more unemployment. Let's say you don't get a job, your wife doesn't get a job. How long will that $18,000 that's left last you? Uh, probably one year. That's it. One year. And yeah. would you not be afraid that entire year that if something were to happen, your car breaks down, whatever it may be, wouldn't you have the same type of fear that you have right now, but just transferred it to the $18,000 that you have left? That's true. A year from now, it could be the same. Could be the same. So here's yeah. what I would do if I were you. I would make sure that I went out, and I don't care if that means that I have to wait tables, I'm a bartender, I don't care what I have to do, that I drive other, you know, I drive older people around, go shopping for them. I would find a way to make my mortgage payment of $243 a month. That is a very little amount of money to make in order for you to secure your home. If you did that, you would at least know that your home is safe and sound. You also can take $243 a month out of your emergency fund, which is $48,000 to pay your mortgage. And then once you get your job, then you have more money coming in. Then once you have your emergency fund built up again, if you want, take the $30,000 and pay off your mortgage. Because I have a feeling that you, you financed this home a few years ago. Your interest rate is probably at 7% or so. So it doesn't make any sense. And it's all principal payment anyway at this point in time. So do it that way, but don't put yourself in a situation where all your money is in the house and you can't feed yourself. Let's go to Andy in Illinois. Ask me your question, my friend. Hi, Susie. I, I need your advice. Um, I play in a band on the weekends. Um, lately, I put most of my earnings in an envelope. I use this money for my music emergency fund for, like, repairs, ads, replacing instruments. Well, my family found out about the envelope and feels I should share my earnings. I think they're a bit off-key. However, they have a point. Why should my gig money be any different than my day job earnings and my wife's earnings? She doesn't have a separate fund. We have the Susie Orman Essentials, like no credit card debt. I have an emergency fund and retirement. I want to know what's fair. Is my gig money just mine? Yeah, you know what's interesting is, Andy, did you hear how you said, I have an emergency fund? You did not say, no, sir, you did not say, we have an emergency fund. You did not include your wife in that. Why? Well, because it's, it's, it's basically a business. I, I need, you know, if my instrument breaks or I have a, an emergency, I have, to, I have to fund it so I can keep playing. All right. But your wife and you, do you both, besides your emergency fund for this band, do you both have an emergency fund that you're both okay? Everything is okay with the family regardless of what you have? Absolutely. All right. I just have a question. How come you hid it from them? Well, I wouldn't, well, uh, I guess I kind of treat it as, as, as a business. I mean, I... No, uh, you hid it from them. I have separate businesses. I have things going on. But I always tell KT, I always say, look how much money I made. Look what I have. Here it is, da-da-da-da. But you put it in an envelope, and you hid it from them, and they happened to discover it. How would you feel, seriously, if all of a sudden you were looking through your wife's underwear drawer, for whatever reason, and you all of a sudden came across $5,000 that she had there? Well, I mean, I guess I would wonder where it came from. Yeah, and would you also not wonder why she didn't tell you about it? I mean, here's the real thing, Andy. This is between you and your wife. If you have the money, everything's going okay. I don't mind that you have money that you, you know, from your gig, as you say, that you get to keep separate. 
but you should share it with her. At least she knows it's there. That you have it, it's yours, she'll be happy for you, but the fact that you're hiding it says to me something else is happening here. Not exactly sure what, though. Up next, a Susie follow-up. Everybody listen closely now because you're in Morgan's situation. Your parents don't know you have credit card debt. Nobody knows anything about you. What did they say when they finally heard it on the Susie Orman Show? And later, in wanting something, ask me, can I afford it? I want to buy an airplane. I uh, use Cessna 172. For $30,000. Does your wife want you to buy this plane? Uh, no. She, Did uh, your wife get you to call into this show? Yes. Think Susie's just for Saturdays? Now you can take her anywhere, anytime with free podcasts of The Susie Orman Show on iTunes. Bingo. Never miss another minute of Susie. To download full episodes, just go to iTunes and search CNBC's The Susie Orman Show. Welcome back, everybody. Now for a Susie follow-up. A few months ago, actually, it was for Halloween night. We had two people on, Morgan and her friend Joey. Now, Morgan came on the Susie Orman Show. She had some skeletons in her closet that she wanted to get out of her closet so that everybody could see them. In fact, take a look. For years, I've been shopping dining out, traveling, and it was fun, but most of the expenses that I've had have been put on my credit cards. What she's trying to say, everybody, is that for years her husband never had a clue that she had $37,000 in credit card debt and an average interest rate of 22%. Let me just give you very quickly your action plan. If you stop spending $350 a month on vacation, $45 a month on a health club, $170 a month on clothes, $350 a month eating out, along with $400 a month that you're currently putting in your retirement plan. You will be out of credit card debt in 1.8 years, and it will have cost you a total of $8,000 in interest. You still have friends who do not have a clue that you are not who you financially appear to be. I actually brought my best friend with me, so she's kind of hearing this for the first time. Is she there with you? She's here. So, Joey, are you in shock? What do you think about it? Joey, I guess you didn't know that. Did you ha not have a clue that Morgan had $37,000 of credit card debt? Maybe a little clue, but... Joey, do you have credit card debt? Um, maybe. $20,000? Did you hear your voice go up? Joey, Morgan, stop it. All right, Morgan and Joey, I can't wait. First of all, welcome both of you to the Susie Orman Show. Last year, you were supposed to have a Halloween party, and that's when you were to invite everybody to let them see the skeletons in your closet. Did you have that party? Susie, I was not able to have the party because most of my friends um, have children and they were out trick-or-treating or at other Halloween parties. But I did have several people watch the show and I did get a barrage of emails, texts, and phone calls after the show ran um, with my family and friends' reactions. All right, so two things. How did you feel as you were watching the show? Well, I watched the show with my husband, and at first it was kind of embarrassing, but it was um, uh, relieving to me to watch it with him. How did he feel? Um, he actually felt really good about me, us watching the show together. Yeah. I think he was a little, he was afraid to watch it with other people. But at the, after the end, we actually TiVo'd it and watched it a second time to really um, get, you know, listen to what you had to say and, you know, kind of laugh at myself, too. And so, so what's the lesson, do you think, in there, Morgan, truthfully? This thing that you have been afraid to tell everybody that you owed $37,000 of credit card debt. I'll say that again. 37000 
thousand dollars of credit card debt. You were afraid to tell anybody. Joey, your best friend there, didn't even know that you had it. And now nope. you're watching yourself on national television and in countries throughout the world, by the way. I don't know if you know that as well, but that's okay. besides the point. So you went worldwide <laughs> after seeing it twice. Don't you think it was absolutely ridiculous that you were so afraid to tell anybody when you think about it? Absolutely. Um, you know, Joey and I talk about this all the time. It's like, don't be afraid to live your life. What are those things that you're afraid of? And, you know, get over that so you can, you know, live your dreams and everything. And here I was, I was like having my finances hold me hostage. And now I talk about it, and I'm amazed at what people tell me about their finances yeah. because they want to know, how did you do it? What, did, what changes did you make? You know, what did Susie say? Yeah. See, what's interesting is my theme for this year is standing in the truth. And when you mm -hmm. stand in your truth, you give permission for everybody else around you to stand in their truth as well. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Yay! Just, yay! Joey, go, yay! <laughs> yes, Joey. As you saw in the videotape of you, there were things that I asked you to do. Did you do them? Susie, I got to work the minute I got home. Um, I did a few things that you didn't tell me to do, but I think helped my situation. I refinanced my house, and I was able to save about $127 a month. Um, I did immediately uh, discontinue my investment plan um, at work, which saved me $366 a month. Right, and again, um, for all of you watching right now, the reason that I had Morgan do that is she had a 403B plan that did not match her contribution. She had $37,000 of credit card debt at a double-digit interest rate. That's why, mm -hmm. everybody, so this was Morgan's plan, so just listen to what I told Morgan to do. Go on. Um, I did stop my fitness plan. That was $45 a month. Um, one of the things that I did on my own is um, I'm starting to take my lunch to work as much as I can, and that'll be about $20 to $30 a month that I will save. Yeah. I took all my credit cards out of my wallet. Um, I worked with my banker, and I did, um, this is one thing that you didn't tell me to do, and I know that you caution against this, but I took out a second mortgage and I was able to pay off four of the credit cards at, and so then I have a five-year loan at 7% instead of the average 22% on the credit cards. Um, so, and then all the money that I'm saving, I'll be paying off that last credit card. And when I get that paid off, um, then I'll be focusing on um, transferring that money to the second mortgage to pay off the second mortgage. All right, and just out of curiosity, when you refinanced your home and everything, how much were your closing costs? Um, $500. $500, great, okay. So, so you're on track to do yes. what you feel like you should do and you're feeling good about it. I'm feeling fantastic. Joey. 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 Hi. Everybody, Joey is Morgan's best friend. And Joey simply accompanied Morgan a few months ago to the show. Then in the, in the process of the conversation, I said to Joey, you have any credit card debt? And Joey said, oh, yeah, about $20,000. I'm like, what? So <clears throat> what happened to you, Joey, after you left the show? Well, I uh, couldn't believe that I had announced to the world how much I was in debt for credit card, but it was good because it was, a, it was an awakening. I've been bartering, uh, for instance, so when I ate out at our local restaurant in town, he, in essence, he took care of our bill, and then he comes in, and then we give him a gift certificate from our restaurant, so it doesn't actually cost us any money if we, we like want to go that. out. There you go. So yes. here's the bottom line. The two of you are friends for life. The two of you now are going to be honest friends for life. The two of you are going to set an example how all of your other friends, family, anybody you know can simply stand in the truth. And by standing in the truth, you are making it right. So let's declare a make it right movement right here on the Susie Orman Show. And every Yay. action that you take, 
we make it right, not only for you, but for everybody else around you. I have to tell you, ladies, I'm really, really proud of you. Thank, Thank you, you for Thank coming you. on the Susie Thank Orman you. Show. Thank you for being, you. You know, being willing to reveal it all to everybody. <laughs> And not only that, though, to do what it takes to take the necessary steps to turn this around. Up next, you can't afford to miss, can I afford it? I want to throw myself a 60th birthday party next year. I can relate to that. I have to just tell you that if you do deny me, then I'm going to have to deny you an invitation because there'll be no party and it'll be my turn to cry. Also... I have a goal of running the Disneyland Half Marathon as a way to motivate myself to, you know, getting out there every day and running. Are you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs>want to buy? Uh, Cessna 172 weekend car. Projector and a screen for my teen lounge in the basement. All right, our favorite segment. This is where you call in, you tell me what it is that you want to buy, and I tell you if you can afford it or not. You ready? Let's go. Rodney, what do you want to buy? I want to buy an airplane. I uh, use Cessna 172. For $30,000. Have you ever owned a plane before? No. No. Do you have any idea how expensive it is to own a plane? Windshield cracks, engine needs repair. Do you have any idea? You just don't buy a plane. You really, they are seriously expensive. The fuel, everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you've done your research. I've done some research, yes. All right, some research, boyfriend. Let's fly high here and show me the money. Okay, well, I make uh, $3,500 a year, or $3,500 a month in my uh, job. I get a $2,280 a month in a pension from the Navy. Uh, I have expenses of approximately $4,125 a month. Um, we have not very much debt, uh, just a smidge less than $100,000 in a 30-year fixed mortgage at 6.5%. Uh, we have $350 in credit card debt at 0% interest, which will probably get paid off this month. Uh, savings, we have $8,000 in uh, liquid, uh, $7,000 in various investments, and uh, $15,000 in my 401k. Have you been spending too much time up in the air? <laughs> Seriously, you were a little lightheaded here. Does your wife want you to buy this plane? Uh, no, she... Did your uh, wife she, get you to call into this show? Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah, denied. You do not have... You are 50 years of age. You don't have any emergency fund, so to speak. You don't have any retirement account, so to speak. You have a little bit of credit card debt. You still owe money on your home. How are you going to pay for this? I don't even want to ask you because you don't have any money to pay for it. You are simply grounded. You are not taking off here on the Susie Orman Show. Jennifer, what do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. Hi, Jennifer. I, <laughs> I just had my third baby. And I've taken up running as a way to get back in shape and set a good example for my kids. Yeah. And I have I have a goal of running the Disneyland Half Marathon as a way to motivate myself to, you know, getting out there every day and running. Yes. Um, I never do anything for myself, and this is something I really want to do for me. However, since I'm a mommy and I want my family's everything to me, I really wanted to include them and take me with, uh, take them with me. So I want to run the marathon for myself and do it. Disney family vacation for everyone. Uh, I am going to keep my fingers crossed for you. You know that I'm seriously into moms right now. Do you know that? I have a new website that I created called moneymindedmoms.com. So you should go there because the whole part of it is how you save more so you can worry less. And with three kids, you are a mom with money on your mind. But right now, let's see if you can go to Disneyland, so to speak. Show me the money, girlfriend. Okay, we take home 6680 a month. Good. We have expenses of 4257 a month. Even better. We ha the only debt that we currently have is our home, and that's 236000 30 30-year fixed at 5.25%. Fabulous. Um, in savings, we have 17000 liquid. We have 44000 in investments, and we have 137000 in retirement. And how are you going to pay for this? Um, well, since I have a couple of months, I was just planning on taking out a take-home pay. 
and just saving it for yourself. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, just saving it. And I, I don't like having debt, so we're just going to pay for it outright, of course. All right. You have been, are you ready for this? Yeah. Uh, approved. And the reason yeah. that you are approved is this. You are 28 years of age, correct? Yes. You already have money in investments. You're going to save for this. This is your goal. I get that moms hardly ever do anything for themselves. You know, you, should you have maybe a little bit more? All right. But for you, you go for it because I think it's a great thing that you're doing for yourself and your family. But just this one time, if you call in and ask again, I will deny you. All right. Marie, what do you want to buy? I want to throw myself a 60th birthday party next year. You know, the, I, the can has... I can relate to that. <laughs> We're 60 together. There you, know? you go. Now, I'm telling you. So the, it's three. Well, the, the Lord has blessed me with a great family and friends, and I'd like to just get together with them and have a dinner and dance. There's a special place I'd like to rent and uh, have a DJ to play some good old 50s and 60s music so I can dance into that new year of 60. And, and I have a question for you. Uh -huh. I bet this is the first time you ever, in your 60 years, threw yourself a party, right? Actually not. I threw myself a party at 50. At 50. So you do this every <laughs> decade. You're, you're, a, you're a decade kind of gal, huh? Yeah, but well, I kind of want to do it a little bit special, a little bit bigger than than at 50. You so. got it. Show me the money, well, sweetheart. Well, before I do that, I have to just tell you that if you do deny me, then I'm going to have to deny you an invitation because there'll be no party and it'll be my turn to cry. Oh, well, you know what? Then well, you're just approved. <laughs> Forget it. I'm just going to approve you right off the bat. Who cares about your money? Because I want to come. Show me the money, sweetheart. All right. I got 4500 a month take home. Yeah. My expenses are three, a little over 3000 a month and 500 of that is rent. I have absolutely no debt. I have 2,800 uh, liquid and 233,000 in investments and 214,000 in retirement. And it's really 28,000 that you have oh, liquid. I'm sorry, yes. It's yes. all right. I'm watching your money for you. How are okay. you going to pay for this? Oh, uh, actually, I'm putting aside so much a month for about 10 or 12 months. All right, so in fact, I've actually started setting some aside for it. All right, so you're not touching anything that I'm you've not got, touching right? Anything. I'm not touching anything. All right, so let me be the first to say to you, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. You're approved. How well, could I you. say to a fellow 60-year-old that they can't, especially with an accent like that? Oh, my God, I just think you're adorable. Anyway. And you can afford it. Bill, what do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank you. I would like to buy a weekend car. Just to drive on the weekend? Well, a oh, weekend. wait, 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 wait. Now the slide just came up for me. $30,000 just to drive the car on a weekend. Why can't you spend $30,000 on a car that you drive all the time? Well, I already have a car that I drive all the time. I How that old are you? I'm 39. I knew it. I knew it. I was going to say he's either turning 40, 50, or 60. You men, I don't know what it is about you men, but 40, you turn 40 and you think you're over the hill. Now, maybe you are, but, but you know, maybe it's true. I don't know much about that, but, but it's like, all right, $30,000 for a weekend car. So is that a Mercedes I see? Is that what you want? Uh, that's the one I'm looking at now, but that, it's not set in stone, but 30000 is definitely my cutoff limit. All right, just show me the money. I have uh, $7,821 in take-home income combined. Yeah. Expenses of 3314 Yeah. And I own my home outright. Great. I have no debt. Great. I have 209000 in liquid savings. Yes. $1.1 in investments. Yeah. And I do want to mention that 500000 of that came from an inheritance. Yes. And I have 256000 in retirement. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you said that because, Bill, so many times people are tweeting me saying, Susie, stop showing these people on the Can I Afford It segment that have all this money in retirement and savings. How is that possible? Well, through inheritance, through hard work, and through savings, it is possible, everybody. But the question is, can Bill, at the age of 39, take $30,000 and spend it on a weekend car? I hate to do this to you because I know you really want it, but you have been approved because you can afford it. Should yeah. you do it or not? Are you kidding me? 
Gary, what do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. I love your show, your show so much. Oh, thanks, Gary. How old are you? I'm 15 years old. I am just loving that the 15-year-olds, the 12-year-olds, the 18-year-olds are watching my show. You know, I did a book signing and a talk a little bit ago in New Jersey, and we had kids galore who were 15 years of age came to hear me speak, and I'm like going, are you kidding me? But I could not be happier. Sir, what do you want to buy? Uh, I would like to buy a projector and a screen. For what? For my teen lounge in the basement. So you want to spend $500 for your friends to come and be able to watch movies and all of that so you could impress them, correct? Correct. All right, is this a need or is this a want? This is a want. All right, you are 15 years of age. In just two more years, are you going to be going to college? Uh, yes, that's the plan. That's the plan, and who's going to pay for that? Um, my parents. And your parents are footing the entire bill? Um, hopefully. Hopefully, but you don't know for sure, right? Correct. Do you see your parents at all struggling with money? Um, no, not really. Not really. Do they talk to you about money? Do you even know how much your father makes? Um, no, I do not know that. Do you know how much your mother makes? No, I do not. So, really, we have a family here that doesn't discuss finances at, at any level. Correct. Correct. So you're just assuming that they're going to pay for college, everything's going to be okay, but yet they never talk to you about money. Show me the money. Okay, I take home $196 a month. Yes. With $76 from allowance and $120 from babysitting. Great, yes. And my expenses are $93 a month. Yeah. Um, I have no debt, and my savings are $3,000 in liquid and $3,000 in investment. All right. And you want to know, so you have $6,000 that you have, and you want to essentially, with taxes and everything, spend 10% of what you have on this projector for a want to impress your friends, correct? Yes. Should I approve you or deny you, my dear Gary? Um, I would really like if you could approve me. You would like if I could approve you, but because I love you, I have denied you. Uh. And I'm denying you not because you don't have the money right now, because you do. But the question is going to be, since you haven't talked about money to your family, in two years from now, who is paying for what? Is the $500 worth it to watch this for maybe a few times during the next two years when you will need money to go away to college? Think about that, boyfriend. Yeah. Want to be part, and by the way, all of you should talk to your children about money. Okay, want to be part of the Can I Afford It segment? All you have to do is go to my website, suzyorman.com, and you will find the information that you need to know there. Come on, say it with me. To come and play with me. Do your hand like this. Right. Here. Yeah. Up next, Debbie wants to know, Susie, how am I doing? You do know the key to enjoying life isn't just are you physically okay, but it's if you're financially okay as well. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. All righty. You have goals in life. You're working for something. What are you working for? Most of you are working for that illusion one day or the reality one day that you will be able to afford to retire. That's what most of you want to know from me. You want to know, Susie, can I afford to retire? And tonight in particular, Debbie wants to know from me, Susie, how am I doing? Hi, Susie. I'm 55 and hope to retire by 62. After two divorces and saving for my son's education, I'm playing catch up with my finances. I think I've bounced back, but not quite to where I should be. I eventually want to spend more time with my twin sister, volunteer at the Humane Society, and enjoy life while my health is still good. Susie, how am I doing? Debbie, how are you? Pretty good. Thanks for having me on the show. Anytime. You know, Debbie, I just you're 55 years of age right now. And it so confuses me because so many of you at 55, and I can talk to you like this because I'm going to be 60 this year in just a few months. You always think as you get older, you're going to be too old to enjoy life. And you do know the key to enjoying life isn't just are you physically okay, but it's if you're financially okay as well. You got that? Right. So it's really important. This is a very 
very important decision that the two of us together are about to make. If you were going to give yourself a grade based on what you have right now, what you think you will have seven years from now, in answering the question, can Debbie afford to retire at the age of 62, what grade would you give yourself? Probably a C plus. Then why are you even asking me? <laughs> why are you even asking? I'm serious. Because you would only want to be able to graduate with an A for you really to be able to retire. Don't you think? It's either perfect or it's not. But girlfriend, before I give you my grade, let's look at your money. She has income of about $4,000 a month and expenses of about $3,200 a month. She has $231,000 in retirement, $3,300, I'll repeat that, $3,300 in an emergency fund, $5,800 in investments. Her current home value is $148,000. She has consumer debt of $5,800, most of that, a car, things like that. Mortgage debt, $58,000, so she owns about $390,000 worth of assets. She owes about $64,000 on those assets. So we have a $200 some odd thousand dollar net worth. Now, like most people, the only way that Debbie is going to be able to afford to retire at the age of 62 is Debbie will qualify for a pension. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. You also have a plan that your home that you are currently living in, that you want to stay in, I believe, will be paid off at the age of 62 as well. Is that correct? That's my goal. All right. If I were to look at what you have, what you're about to have and everything in answering your question. I have to tell you, I agree with you. I give you a C or a C plus. If you're going to retire at 62, let me tell you why. And you know, once you've retired, you have more time. You get to do more things and actually your expenses can go up in retirement rather than down. So just for safekeeping, let's make it that you need $3,000 a month after taxes for you to be okay at the age of 62. Your before tax pension is $3,111. Your social security is $711. So that gives you $3,822 before taxes or after taxes, because your Social Security will be taxed as well, 85% of it, $2,900 a month after taxes. So you're just about making it. Now, I understand that you have money and everything. You have about $201,000 and whatever it may be in all your retirement accounts and that you're going to continue to contribute to all of these. Let's just say by the time you're 62, you have $275,000 in these retirement accounts. At most, even after taxes, that's another five or $600 a month. So even if you were to withdraw money at that time from these retirement accounts, you're at $3,400 a month after taxes for the rest of your life. If you get ill, you have to go into a nursing home, anything happens, there is not enough money for you to be able to do so. However, if you just were willing to work a few more years, just another three years, we're already in 2011, time is always flying. If you just worked till you were 65, then I would probably be giving you a B plus. Why? Because at 65, your pension goes up to $4,400 a month from $3,100 a month. Your Social Security, because of what you do, essentially stays the same. So you're at $5,100 before tax. After tax, you're at about $3,800 a month. You could essentially make it. You could leave your $275,000 in your retirement account to grow and grow and grow in case of an emergency. And if you needed it, so what? It's another five or $600 a month, but I don't think you'll need it. If you did it that way, you would have a good $2,000 extra per month from probably what you'll really need, and you'll be just fine because I still have your nest egg of $275,000. That is your way to an A. 
She did something that I wish she hadn't done. I did a few things that you didn't tell me to do, but I think helped my situation. She looked so happy. She was so enthusiastic. She had done so well, truthfully speaking, that I didn't want to squash her. Welcome back, everybody. Now, before we end the show, something has been bothering me, seriously bothering me all night, and I want to talk to you about it. Earlier on this evening, we heard from Morgan. Morgan was our woman who had paired on Halloween. She had $37,000 of credit card debt, and nobody knew about it. And I gave her a list of actions that I wanted her to take, which she did, but on her own, she also did certain things that I didn't tell her to do. Now, while she was telling me that she did this and she did that, my heart was breaking because she looked so happy. She was so enthusiastic. She had done so well, truthfully speaking, that I didn't want to squash her. I know. You think I don't have a heart. Well, you are wrong. But I do want to say this now to all of you. She did something that I wish she hadn't done. She actually refinanced her home and took out a second mortgage as well to pay down credit card debt. I refinanced my house and I was able to save about $127 a month. I took out a second mortgage and I was able to pay off four of the credit cards and so then I have a five-year loan at 7% instead of the average 22% on the credit cards. How many times have I said to all of you, you are never, ever, ever to take unsecured debt, which is credit card debt. Credit card debt is secured by nothing. If you cannot pay your credit card bills, they cannot come in and take your house away from you, take your car away from you. They can't even take away all the things that you purchased on those credit cards that you can't afford to pay now. It is unsecured debt. You never take unsecured debt and pay it off with secured debt. When you take a second mortgage out on your home, the home is what is securing that mortgage. If you lose your job, you get ill, something happens, and you cannot pay that mortgage payment, they will take your home away from you. So you have used, Morgan used, secured debt to pay off unsecured debt. Big mistake. Now, I know on the surface that it looks like that's exactly what you should do. Why pay 20% non-tax deductible when you can pay four, five, 6% tax deductible? It makes financial sense to do so, but the risks, especially in this type of an economy, are way too high to ever do that. There are other ways to get your interest rate down, get your FICO scores up, do balance transfers, go to NFCC, National Foundation of Consumer Credit, and get them to consolidate your loans for you and get it down to a 0% interest rate. So you watch the Susie Orman Show, or in 2011 of the Susie Orman Show, and I've been saying this now for the past nine years. We're in our 10th year, remember? Oh, I can't believe it. Do not make that mistake. So Morgan, you did so great. I just wish you hadn't done that. All right. Until next week, however, there's only one thing, just one, that I want you to remember when it comes to your money, and it is this. People first, then money, then things. Now you stay safe.